everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we're painting the new Brutalis Dreadnought. Yes, here it is. Fantastic new addition from Games Workshop to the Space Marines. This is one that a lot of people have been really looking forward to. And we're going to be painting him today in the colours of the Blood Angels. Now he comes as part of the Strike Force Agastus box which was sent to me early by Games Workshop. So a massive thank you to them. And well, we're going to just jump in and we're going to start painting him. He has been primed in grey here and he's been built in two halves as you can see uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the whole thing at once but we're mostly going to focus on the legs to begin with once we get through all of that we'll then move on to the top part but as i said these major large colors we're going to be doing all over the dreadnought so the color we're going to be using first is some thinned down iron warriors and what we're going to do we're going to paint this over the top of all of our internal mechanics. So this is going to be areas like joints and things, if we just pop that off for the moment. It's going to be areas such as this kind of hip joint here, like this. It's going to be areas such as like the little knee pistons and things like that. Basically anywhere that's kind of inside the model. And areas that would be quite tricky to reach, should we do all of the red first. So we're just going to get this all over. Just like this. Because of the way these Brutalis Dreadnoughts are constructed, they're a lot more heavily armoured, so there's actually less metallics on this one than there is on a typical Redemptor, which is very cool, very good, very nice. So with that Iron Warrior is all applied, there we go, as you can see. What we're then going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion and we're going to apply this to a couple of different areas. So what we're going to do on the legs is we're going to apply this to these large ports with kind of swivel joints and balancing things, whatever they're called. We're going to apply this over the top of the Iron Warriors. Like that, so you've got the one there, and we've got the one just there as well. Like so, and then in the hip joint. We've got this kind of section just here. I'm going to apply this over. Just like that. I'm going to replicate that on both legs. Whereas on our torso, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of that black legion and we're going to apply this over this part of the shoulder. So with that Black Legion applied, we then take some Nulled Oil and we use this to shade both the black and the silver. So I'll just pop the carapace off again. And we're gonna get this all over both of these colors.
So with that done, we can now stop working on the internals of the Dreadnought. We can actually start working on the armor because this is all now War Hipster Battle ready. And it's not quite ready enough for highlights because it's still wet in some places, but it's perfectly adequate that we can move on to the next color, which is of course Baal Red. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Baal Red and we're now gonna apply this over well, pretty much all of the armor. And well, I'm just gonna start down here on the foot and I'm going to work my way up the Dreadnought. And what you want to do here is just be a little bit careful. You don't want to overload your brush too much because whilst Bile Red is a single pigment, you won't get kind of too much in a way of streaking. What you can end up doing is you can end up creating drips if you have way too much on your brush. And the drips will dry in a lumpy fashion. And you don't want that. You just want to take it steady. And you want to get this over the top of most of your dreadnought. There's a couple of spots here and there that are going to be a different color. And you can, of course, wait until the next take to see what those are. Or you can check out the product photography in the Strike Force Augustus box. So with all of that bile red applied, we've got a very, very red dreadnought. Red Dead Dreadnought. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to shade all of that red. And the color we're going to be using to do that is a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and Blood Angels Red. But what I've done is I've put like four or five brushfuls of each onto my palette. And what we're going to do is we're just going to apply this over the top of all of our bar red. And we're going to once again just take it nice and steady over the top. Gonna apply a nice subtle shading and really punch up that color. Now you are going to want to watch out for pooling and the like. Because Blood Angels Red is a more traditional contrast paint. So it does have that darker pigment in it. So don't overload your brush too much. Especially when it comes to painting areas that are really flat and open. Like this little doodad here on the back of the leg. You'll see it here on the leg itself. You really don't want too much on the brush. There's one brush full goes quite a long way. Especially with it thinned down with that contrast medium. You can see I'm moving with the grain of the model.
So with that done, you should now have a really gorgeous looking red all over your miniature. Now don't worry if you've got a couple of little splodges or mistakes here and there, that's okay. We can always neaten that up a little bit later on. So for example, I've got a couple of little dark spots on the back here. There's just one just there. But like I said, we will neaten that up a little bit later when we come to finishing off the rest of the red. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the rest of the base colors. And there's not very many. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Black Legion next. I'm going to use this to paint in all of our black details. So, because it's a Blood Angel, we're going to be painting in this Aquila here on the front. We're going to be painting in the weapon casings. We're going to be painting in any ribbed or smooth cables. As well. including any other details that you want to be black. So with that Black Legion applied, as you can see, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down Iron Warriors and we're gonna apply this to all of our remaining silver details. So this is gonna be areas that are kind of mechanical in nature or indeed these talons, the ones that we didn't do when we were doing the internal workings of the Dreadnought. So with all of that Iron Warrior is applied, we then take some thinned down Castellax Bronze and we're going to apply this to the multi-melter barrels. Now that sort of thing. What we're also going to do on the Brutalis Claws or Talons, we're going to apply this over the kind of central sections. little kind of sort of ribbed a bit like that, just to create a little bit of visual interest on them and so with that Castellax bronze applied we then take some thinned down retributor armor I'm going to use this to paint in the decorative elements on the sarcophagus. So with that retributor arm applied, we then take some skeleton hoard and we're gonna apply this over the top of all of our purity seals paper. And so with that skeleton horde applied, we're then going to use a tiny amount of Leviathan purple and apply this over the top of the wax seals. So with that, all of our base coats are now on on our Brutalis Dreadnought. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some shades and we're going to start with Agrax Earthshade here. I'm going to apply this over the top of the Castellax Bronze and over the top of the Retributor Armour.
And so with that done, we're then going to once again use some null oil and we're going to use this to shade the black and the silver, just like we did before. So with that done, our Dreadnought is now what I would call a War Hipster battle ready. It's already looking pretty awesome. However, we are going to now take it to the next level. And one of the things we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of correcting. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly two to one mix of Mephiston Red and Evil Sun Scarlet. And then we're going to thin it down with sort of three or four or even five parts water, depends on what you're comfortable with. And we're just going to use this as a little kind of glaze almost over the top of our slightly patchy areas so for example just here on the back i'm just going to apply that like that just to fix it up So now that our splodges are sorted, you'd never know the difference. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is going to highlight him. And we're going to start with the red. And the color that we're going to use for this first is Evil Sun Scarlet on its own. So with that Evil Sun Scarlet all applied, we then take some thin down Fire Dragon Bright. And we're gonna apply this to the upward facing and sharpest details. So for example, this little edge here, we're gonna apply an edge highlight going all the way across like that. Then we're just gonna bring it down a little bit on either side like that, but we're not gonna do the underside. So with that done, all of the red armor is now finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the black and the color we're gonna be using to highlight this is Dawnstone. And we just wanna do this over the top of all of our black details, including the ones we did in the first phase. So with that Dawnstone all applied, we're then gonna take some Liberator Gold. I'm gonna use this to highlight the gold. With that gold all highlighted, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Rune Lord Brass, and we're gonna use this to highlight the Castellax Bronze. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some thin down iron breaker. I'm gonna use this to highlight all of our silver. I'm gonna pick a place to start. I'm gonna start up here in the carapace and work my way around. So 
just take your time here. And then once that's done, we'll come back. So that done, all the metallics are finished. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some thin down jean steeler purple. I'm just gonna use this to highlight the wax seals. On the purity seals. And with that jean steeler purple applied, we then take some screaming skull. We just use this to add some highlights to the parchment. So with those purity seals all done, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Talisar Blue and we're just gonna apply this over the top of all of our little lenses and things. So we've got this one here. We've got one just down here. In there as well. We've got one up there. And We've got one up here on the heavy stubber, like that. So with that done, there's just one last thing to do, and that's the Mechanicus symbol on the back. Now we're gonna be using two colors here. We're gonna be using Black Legion, and we will be using Corax White, because what we need to do is we need to half the design. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put Black Legion over the skull on the right-hand side of the skull, Like that and the cog on the outside we want to do the left hand side and with that done we then use some corax white on the left hand side of the skull and the right hand side of the cog So with his base complete, I actually added a couple of transfers to this guy as well. If you'd like to see how it is I apply transfers, you can check out one of the Blood Angels Outriders videos that we've also got here on the channel, which is where I show you how I do it. I think this Brutalis Dreadnought is fantastic once it's all finished up and it looks amazing. Very lethal, very different to the Redemptor Dreadnought, which you can check out in the review video I posted earlier today. Really, really cool little kit, lovely addition to the Space Marine range, and I can't wait to see if we're going to get any more Dreadnought variants. Yes. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.